Boom! It's mind pump time. All right, we're going to give away Maps Split for today's episode. Maps Split is a bodybuilding style workout program. It's for those of you that are somewhat advanced, which is probably all of you, because why are you watching this channel? You're watching this channel because you're better than most people, right? All right, anyway, so you get Maps Split for free if you do the following. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours so you can bump us in the YouTube algorithm so people, more people get to see our channel. Leave that comment, subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications, and then if we pick your comment, if we think your comment's the best one of all the comments that were dropped in that first 24 hours, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to Map Split. Isn't that great? One more thing before this podcast starts. Two programs are on sale, 50% off. Maps Hit and Maps, excuse me, Maps Hit and the No BS Six Pack Formula. Both 50% off. Go check them out. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code July Special for that discount. All right? Enjoy this podcast. I want... I want... Let me you tell want you the what same I thing I want? Maybe. Let's see. You and I sometimes share a brain. Let's see here. Let's go. Yes. I would like... Uh, I would like Andrew to shut his face over there, first of all. That's what I would like. Hey, with the <laughs> chatter. Like, the second thing I would like is I actually would like an update from Justin. Mm. I want to hear. That's an, exactly what I was going to ask. You. I want to hear a. Yeah, you, I think we need to make it consistent that every week that you give us the high school football update on what's going on with your kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have okay. you beat anybody? Have you made anybody cry yet? Have you sent anybody home? No cries. Uh, I mean, there's been some some rough days, but there's also been some really uplifting days. So like. I was a little bit, um, I was a little bit nervous because like we were kind of coming in hot, like me and my friends. So I actually pulled one of my friends from high school that I played with a real good friend of mine who's passionate about the program there and everything and like had really good fond memories of it. And, uh, he was like, I don't know, man, I, I got to work. Uh, you know, I, I'm busy and all this stuff. I'm like, dude, you think I'm not busy? Like that's everybody's excuse. And I'm like, I'm there. You're like five minutes down the street. I'm like, if you, if you just show up for one practice, let's see, let's see if, uh, you know, this, this is something that you want to help me with. And so he, he ended up getting roped in. I roped him in and it's funny because, um, we, we come from like the old school where it's just like every little detail, every little thing. We, we pay attention to attitudes. We pay attention to you know a lot of effort that like each kid's exerting. And so anyway, he saw a lot of the same things I did. And so we, we got a little bit uh, crazy because this is still summer, right? This isn't even like legit practices yet. This yeah. is like, you know, the kids that are there are like going through the workouts and kind of just- Is it optional? Football. Is right it's now optional? optional? Okay. Uh, somewhat. I mean, we're trying to like- It's like- Encouraged. It's encouraged because, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. There's a big amount of, um, I mean, they got to learn a lot even getting into camp. A lot of these kids have, haven't even played before. And uh, especially like freshman, sophomore, we're just kind of trying to help all the kids at once. So all the varsity and JV, and there's no freshman team. So they're all just kind of like merged into one big group. Oh, so really? you went too hard at first, like when you told them to go home and listen to death metal. <laughs> so I, I did that. <laughs> right. And then we went up there to, so we do that. And then we do the skills training and, and groups and things and try and teach them technique up on the field. And then, run them and, and do like lots of conditioning. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that's where we got a little bit hard on them because we're, we were so used to being a unit. Like everybody was all bought in and, and everybody was looking at everybody's effort and, uh, even doing these sort of, um, we call them quarters, but you do like up downs and then you do push ups and you do sit ups, mm -hmm. you do all these things together in unison, almost like a military. Uh, and we had that so crisp and tight when we were doing them that like everybody, you, you'd come to the field just like, you'd know, you'd know who we are. And so we had that mentality. And, and so some of the kids aren't doing all the reps and, you know, they're kind of like cheating their way through. And, uh, and we're just like, no, like, you know, <laughs> this is not going to, this is not going to work. This is not acceptable. Blah, blah, blah. And like, so we, we kind of went hard and, and put it on them to take ownership of it, especially the captains, uh, on the varsity, we're like, dude, this is a reflection of the team that you guys are a part of and wh where you want to go with this thing. And so it actually like really resonated with it. We, and actually we felt so fired up by it. Like my friend Bo and I actually went and we were like, we got to get a drink, dude. This is, <laughs> this is too much. Dude. We were like, we gotta, we gotta talk this out. Cause we got too like fired up about it. That was so funny. Cause we're so passionate about that. And then the next day, it was like this crazy turnaround of events. Like these, these kids were just like, yeah, 
you know, they're like coaching each other, they're lifting each other up. Like they actually took the entire team and ran what we call agonies, which are like these crazy, uh, this, this, this hill that's like super vertical, uh, and the whole team went with them and, and they did extra after practice and it was just like so encouraging, but yeah, we were like, okay, we need to like find balance here and, and, and allow them to kind of take ownership of the team and, and get after it. So now are, so, you, doing, are you doing any specific yeah, exercises? Yeah, I was going to say, that's what I'm most curious about. I'm curious about all of it, but what I'm right. most curious about is, you know, one, uh, we've talked about this on the show a bunch of times about kids and posture and, you know, what their bodies look like. So are you seeing a discrepancy in like, you know, kids today versus maybe watching, um, you know, our generation, like as far as their movement patterns and yeah. what are you teaching them? Are they picking oh. it up? Like, what are you seeing with lots that? Lots of rounded backs, lots of externally uh, rotated feet, lots of, uh, you know, forward necks. Like it's, everything is exaggerated completely to what, what you guys would think is, is sort of, obvious things from being at a desk or looking at their phone all the time. Like you see that like super exaggerated. Mm. And so, um, it, the, the frustrating part was a lot of the program previous to that was just like, let's just, let's just throw a million plyometrics at them and then condition them. And then also, yeah, also throw some barbell training in there and like, uh, some crazy technical power lifts and, things like that. And I'm like, okay, we need to get back to the basics. And so what I decided to do to start implementing with the team was to bring in our zone tests uh, before we even get started doing any of the workout. Um, And it's great. It's great to see um, how that's immediately impacted a lot of just the overall mechanics and technique that I see now going into the weight room. It's like, I, cause I've, it's really hard. Like, I, honestly, I was swimming in it the first few times that we practiced because you, you just look out there and you're like, oh, my God, where do I begin? Yeah. You know, like I needed something that was super simple and and something that I could get the whole team to just do immediately. Mm. And I'm like, let's do the zone one test. So I threw everybody against the wall. And then it's, it's pretty comical to see how – uh, when I'm demonstrating it, it's one thing. And then I'm like, look, you guys, this is really difficult. It looks simple, but you know, I want to see everybody, you know, go through this and try it out. And, um, to see the struggle with each one of them trying to figure out how to get all those points of contact to hit the wall and to press their body into the wall. Um, but you, you saw like their eyes kind of light up, like, Oh my God, this is crazy. And then feeling the difference of that, um, just, you know, going back into a squat, for instance, was like game changing. Yeah. By the way, when you, when Justin said throw them against the wall, he didn't mean literally. <laughs> yeah. Throw, I know people were like, "What? Are you, what? Are you, wow! What's going on?" No, it's it's a, a wall test. It's a zone one. It's in prime, and it works on upper back kind of mobility, shoulder mobility. You know, works on the neck. It helps with posture mainly. Yeah. Now, here's a cool thing because you're working with kids. Because I've seen this with my son, the few workouts he's had with a trainer, it's like their bodies respond so fast, way faster than when I would train an adult. Are you 100%. seeing this too with the? Yeah, totally. It's, and that's I think what turned my discouragement into encouragement, like immediately, because I've been working with him for about three or four weeks now, um, and even within the first week, it was a substantial change. Wow. Yeah. And, and you got to think about that too. Like a lot of these like younger kids, they have never even attempted uh, weightlifting before. And I was like, wow, was like, what this is crazy. But, uh, if you're a freshman, I mean, that's, that's gotta be pretty common. Mm-hmm. Like that's not something that's, well, um, there's gotta be a couple of reasons why they respond so quick, right? One, obviously it's novel, right? Because they're, they've never done any of that. So their, their body's responding. So well. the other reason why I think it is too, is that they haven't had as long of time doing, having bad patterns. Like it hasn't solidified not, as much, right? That, that's what I would assume is right. Is a big you're, you're a teenager, so that you've only maybe got a, so, a handful of years of bad posture and bad form, bad yeah, versus a 35 year old guy. That's, that's right. Who's got decades? Who's got right. decades of bad habits and patterns that they've solidified? Which is why I also think that the kids probably yeah. correct and respond because they they haven't gone too long with with I, that. I agree with that. And yep. there's also the neuroplasticity in uh, adolescents' oh, brain is. Is, um, incredible, and a lot of what you're what you're doing when you're working out, people always think it's the muscles, right, that are developing and changing. That's true, 
but a lot of the adaptations happen in the central nervous system. And because kids are so, their brains are so plastic, in other words, much more moldable. The best example I can give is like their ability to learn languages without having an accent. Whereas when you're an adult, you learn language, you have an accent forever. Kids just pick it right up um, and they can do it very fluently. It's the same thing with movement. Like you train them. And you know, I, I trained kids also when I was a trainer. And it always blew me away at just how fast their bodies changed. It's like they're like we're all adaptation machines. Yeah. But man, when you're a kid, your body is primed for adaptation. Yeah, what, any kind it, of well, adaptation. I've, I, honestly, I've always thought of it as its own language, like it, movement in general. Totally. And so that that's a perfect analogy. And it, it is one of those things where you, like I was frustrated because I was already thinking in the future of like, oh my God, this might take a year to just get things established and get like proper movement patterns and, and better form in here. And it just started to happen really uh, rapidly, which was great. But well, what is the what is the peak for neuroplasticity? I believe it's five to seven years old is when it's at its peak. I would love to see a graph. Have you seen a graph? Uh, I don't from, know, but like um, what's what what is the peak years of neuroplasticity? So there's a, there's an advantage and a dis sorry. yeah there's an advantage and a disadvantage to it. The advantage is you you learn and grow so much. The disadvantage is you don't have the same honed in sure signal right. So You're creating kids, that. Yeah, so kids are like like their bodies are everywhere and they're not super stable, but they can learn new things and and, and grow very quickly. So there's a, there's a bit of both of those. But um, Doug's looking it up here. Yeah, what changed? Yeah, I believe I've read before the ages five to seven are the most. So there's a critical period into adulthood. It said so. I think up until adulthood, you've got pretty good uh, neuro. I mean, I would I would love to see where it's peaking and where it starts to because obviously it starts to decline. Yeah, you know, at one point that the that ability starts to to, to slow. And actually decline that old a hey, that old wisdom, right? You can't te teach an old dog new tricks. Oh, that's yeah. what it's based on. No, that's exactly right? where it totally. comes from, right? Yeah. They, they, so, oh, here it is. There well, we that's go. brain growth. Oh no, this is peak neuroplasticity. It looks at 14, 16 through eighteen, and then it declines. Oh, oh wow. wow, interesting. Well, that's... it's also strong in the early years. Yeah, so yeah, I, I believe mm. that. So the strongest right there is is that between what is that two to seven or two to five or what is that? I can't see from here. Yeah, it looks like uh, up to age two or so, and then it starts to decline a little bit. But th this to me is why. I mean, I'm very fascinated with this because this goes back to the conversation we had the other day uh, on the podcast talking about our kids and uh, you know training the sleep pattern and everything like that. Like that's look how high the, the neuroplasticity yeah. is at before even two years old. And again, I think that their senses are heightened on the way they feel. So to think that if you have a child in an environment where there's yelling and screaming and fighting and dysfunction or inconsistency, their and brain like, molds itself. A hundred percent. Yeah, it does mold itself to that. It's, um, uh, you know, it's, it's funny. I just read a study that showed that mothers who exercise while pregnant um, oh, I and was they, gonna ask you about this. And they control for factor. They control for all factors: behavioral factors, uh, lifestyle factors. Still, if a mom works out while she's pregnant, the child is going to be fitter, leaner, and build muscle easier as as the, when they're born and as they grow up. And they think it has to do with uh, the way that genes express themselves. Mm. Now, this makes perfect sense. Let's say, for example, you're a mom, you're pregnant, and you're lifting weights. Right, the baby is in the womb. But the genes of the baby are preparing itself for the outside world. And the best, the only way that it can judge what's going on in the outside Based world. Based off of what she's, what's the, mom's the doing. communication that right. they're getting, right? Yeah, so if, if what's happening is, oh, I'm going to have to lift heavy things. Like, that's what life is, you know, when I'm born. I have to lift heavy things. It's going to turn on genes to build more muscle. Yeah, prepare you for the environment. Absolutely. So very, very interesting. This same thing with food. You know, you know that I'd, what the mom eats that'll influence what the baby craves later on. It's like they're preparing themselves for. Katrina you know. asked me before we got pregnant, um, you know, if if I were if I was the one carrying the baby, like how would I approach it? And I told her that I would very much Did you so wear have one this, of those uh, things. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I yeah, practice right yeah. now. So I, I said I would very much so take the same kind of discipline and attitude, even more so. I think. Than the 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 discipline that I had towards competing. That for a nine month period of my life, if there was ever going to be a time that I was more consistent, more restrictive on what foods I'm introducing, I mean, you have the ability to really set the trajectory of mm -hmm. what our son potentially is going to be capable of and or will struggle with. And so if there was ever a time that I was going to be as dialed about all aspects of my life, it, I would try my best in that. Now, now I understand 
how difficult that is. Oh right? yeah, so you I know, feel like shit. Really, I know there's a bunch of women up. that are looking at me that are probably scowling at me, going like, "Yeah, yeah motherfucker, it's real, yeah. real easy for you to sit yeah. over there in, yeah. in your chair yeah, and I'm say that." Up right? all day. Yeah, yeah, right. I so like I get, I get it. I'm just my and my point of that saying that was that I, I would have that attitude towards it. Does that yeah. mean that you have to work with what you got? Right, yeah. right. But I mean, it, it, just more and more research keeps coming out on how. How important those that, that yeah. time is. That and, and and you know back to the, the the brain development and changes. Here's what's always so fascinating about with kids is that when they're especially when they're really young, they change. And I know this sounds crazy, but it's true. Overnight, literally, I'll go to work, and I'll come home, and my my baby son is different. Yeah. Literally, or all like of a brand sudden, brand new characteristics. Yeah, or yeah. just acting different, or all of a sudden they say a new word, or all of a sudden he looks bigger. And we, we used to observe this. Parents would say this all the time. Well, there was this one woman who did lots of studies on this because she thought, she was an expert on this, she thought that the way children grew was in spurts, huh. that they don't grow consistently, that, that, that they'll, they'll go through these, grow, these leaps, right? Yeah. And she did very vigorous testing where she would go measure kids day, day in and day out. And sure enough, it's true. Yeah. If a child grows you know, a two inches in a year, that's all happened in a very short period of time. Oh, the rest yeah. of the year, there's so, nothing Sometimes happened. overnight. It's yeah. wild. That was in that documentary that I think we all watch, right? On yeah. Netflix. That, I've yeah. seen this with my kids. You know, you just see, yeah, you see a period where they're, I mean, they might even go through those growing pains because it is a few inches. Like everything's happening all at once. And I they're know. like, ah. And, and it is. They'll just leap. And then all of a sudden, they're just a new kid. It's Dude, so it's so crazy. Speaking of kids. So I just shared with you guys the other day about my, my best friend's daughter, who has got the vocabulary and I and I taught her kosher. Yeah. Oh, Get right. a text yesterday. Her mom sends, you, would you believe this? We're in the grocery store yesterday and the clerk looks down at her and says, oh, hey, how are you doing today, dear? And she goes, I'm kosher. No. <laughs> I'm kosher. <laughs> it's only made my day, dude. I was like, oh my God, it's so great. That's, I mean, just shows you like, dude, back to the point of like yeah. that neuroplastic. Dude, I barely spent- Virgin olive oil, no dude, babies inside. <laughs> yeah, 10, yeah. 15 minutes of like practicing that with her to solidify that as her answer and then like instantly- What's funny is it just, it. I just hasn't happened with your son yet, but you'll say like an inappropriate word or oh, something, yeah. or he will, and you'll get a reaction just because you can't help yourself, and that's it. It's solidified. Like yeah. I remember my son, my, my my son, my brother, when he was a kid, he said uh, instead of saying fire truck, he said fire fuck. And of course, everybody reacted. Oh, yeah. Well, guess what he said all That's the time? Hilarious. Yeah. That. It was fire fuck. That was his yeah. favorite word. In the whole, yeah. And I'm yeah. Like, oh, dude, you can't. You remember the other thing I tried to tell you to tell, but now you're. Oh saying, yeah. yeah, I told you guys about when they figured out like the differences of people, like you know, size wise, and who ha who had some fat on them and who did it, and like, <laughs> where it just literally pointed out this poor lady at uh, 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 oh, no on chair, and they're just oh, kids. Hey, have no dad, filter. she's no. fat, I'm dude. Like, ah. Dude, I forgot to tell you guys. So this is crazy. So the other day I'm outside walking my son and there's this woman, she's standing outside smoking a cigarette and she turns her back to me. I'm like, okay, whatever. And as, as I'm walking around her, she keeps turning her back to me. So I'm like, this is very strange. So, and I kind of noticed that. I'm like, why is she turning her back to me? Well, anyway, I go around the corner and she doesn't see that I can still see her. She turns back around pregnant, like nine months pregnant, pregnant. And she's smoking? Smoking cigarettes. Just oh, yeah, wow. and I and I'm like, no wonder she turned her back to me, dude. She was embarrassed Yay. that she's sitting there smoking cigarettes while she's wow. while she's pregnant. I know, isn't it crazy? But it still happens. That was a thing, by the way, 30, 40 years ago. Like, well, wasn't there ads at one point that said it was yeah. healthy? Yeah. Hey, what, oh, what, do you have morning it, sickness? It, isn't that Probably yeah. a cigarette? Right. Wasn't that an <laughs> oh, ad? Those were ads, right? At yeah. one point, where they actually encouraged them to do it. Well, but. dude, my cousin, my cousins were when they were born in Italy, and they're all in their fifties now, right? When they were born in Italy, the doctor, like, they're, they're, this is the story, right? The doctor was delivering the baby, put his cigarette in the ashtray to, to pull the baby out. <laughs> He's smoking Dude, it there the whole time. Bro. It's a wonder people made it out and it became normal, <laughs> you know, like with all that stuff. Dude, uh, like Courtney, when she was in the, um, you know, pediatric unit would see like some of the craziest uh, situations, right? You get like some people in there that were like crackheads and, you know, would smoke crack and all. But then the kid would be like super healthy, normal, Wild. everything great. And you're just like, thank God. Like, I can't believe that. Wild. Well, maybe that's why we're, there's a lot of like weaklings these days. I don't know. Maybe because they, <laughs> they, they need a little more extra diversity like, <laughs> in there. Yeah. Not sure if that's the right thing. No, I'm just, I'm just uh, kidding. Anyway, you, you guys want to hear a crazy study? This is one of the craziest studies I've ever read because it highlights the complexity and weirdness of human physiology. So check this out, right? Okay. So they did a study where they gave two groups of people two drinks to drink before they worked out. Now the drink had some sugar in it 
And both drinks did? Both drinks had, everything was identical okay. except for one thing. One of the drinks was clear and the other one was pink. It was colored pink. The pink drink, and they tested this several times, the pink drink improve, improved performance by almost 5%. 5%? What? Because it was pink. Why? I don't know. No <laughs> idea. But they found well, I'll tell you what, that pink, the drinking the pink drink increased performance. And this just, again- I, mean, I have just, a theory. You have a theory? You have a guess? What's your theory? I have a theory. You have a theory on it? Uh, no, I have no theory. So no my theory is that, okay, the, versus a clear a great one, Great slogan, right? drink pink. No, I, I just because it's you. if it's clear- it is going to uh, resemble water. Nothing. Water is nothing. It's basic. So your, right? brain, your brain is perceiving it as chemicals, or so you're taking something. Mm. Which I I think that we've they've shown. Haven't they done studies around this too? Of just by taking uh, pills and supplements, even mm. if they're like sugar pills, yeah. that the, the, you think that you are getting some sort of performance mm. enhancement, and so people perform better from that also. Yeah. So I'm sure it's very similar. It's like you probably think, oh, I'm drinking water. This is nothing, but well, because it's and I bet it has nothing to do with pink. I bet it could be purple, red, green. Placebo I bet if they did that, powerful phenomenon. That's it. That's what they said. They yeah. said they initiated or they induced a placebo effect because the brain is is expecting pink usually is associated with sweetness and sugar. And because that happened, the subconsciously their brains perceived more energy and they got a little bump in placebo. Effect. Right. So I think yeah. that has everything to do with that the control is clear. If the control was red, or green Maybe or another color, I don't think you would see a discrepancy. Yeah, true. I think it's because you're drinking one that looks like water. So the brain is going, oh, I'm drinking nothing. One that's colored, your brain's going, oh, How I'm weird getting is that? something. Yeah. How weird is that? That's you guys you guys know, I think this is the guy that, that this story is from. I hope so. I hope I'm getting this right. Do you guys know Paul Anderson? So like one of the greatest... American and weightlifters of all time. You guys know who this guy is? I don't. Doug, maybe you can look him up. So Paul Anderson competed in, in Olympic weightlifting, I want to say in the 1950s and 40s maybe. And this guy was a beast. Uh, he crushed people with his lifts. Huge guy. There he is right there. That's like a you thousand. Said this is 1940s? I want to say. Oh, I don't I've know seen when that he picture competed. where he's has those wheels. Maybe what Doug can like maybe Doug wheels. can find out when this guy competed. Anyway, uh, cool facts about this guy. Look him up if you're interested in this kind of stuff. He, I think, I believe he used to live on a farm, and part of his routine was he would go into the barn, and he would squat all day long while drinking whole milk from his cows. It's like one of his routines. Anyway, <laughs> you could tell the guy is an absolute beast. <laughs> yeah. And I believe it was this guy. I think it was Paul Anderson when he went for a lift. They accidentally loaded the bar heavier than he thought, and it was a world record, and he did it. And so there's just an there's like a the you know example of of kind of that that placebo or maybe whatever maybe nocebo right you don't know that it's heavier. Have you ever experienced that with like kilograms? Oh yes, I have. You know I've, done I mean? with, I've done that with I've done this with clients on where you do the math. Oh, you've tricked people. I've like done no, I've done this with clients. Clients who I are, were always uh, intimidated, like typically my female clients that were intimidated to lift heavier weight. I would lie to them. I wouldn't tell them. I just slowly increase it, and they would have no idea. And then after the fact, let them know. I know this is the second time in a week that I've told the people that I lie to my clients. I'm probably <laughs> <laughs> it's all for their benefit. It's like a fucking suspect trader over here. <laughs> That's it. That's all the lying I did right there. No, for their own good though. You know, I would I would I would lie about it because I knew that if I said, "Oh, I'm increasing it by ten, they would get all nervous and they get in their head. You just and, hand it to them. Yeah, that, exactly. I just hand it to them and they'd be like, "Oh, how much is this? Oh, it's five pounds lighter than last week." Yeah, you know, yeah. I would. I would say stuff like that. You know that. what? You're right. I used to hate that. How, how much is this? Yeah. And it was usually the female clients because they would be more afraid to lift heavy. Yes. Yeah. How, well, how much weight do you get? Whereas yeah, the yeah. guy clients always yeah. want more. It's right. Appropriate. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I always I would, tell them it's a little bit less than what it was last time. Yeah. Like, oh, don't worry. It's less than. By, what you by the way, it's just, the equally annoying was, would be the male clients because the ego is both ways. Add more all the time. Oh, dude. I could do more. I yes. could do more. Yeah, They're yeah. doing, I'm watching them do their form and I'm like not borderline not good. And I'm thinking, okay, we need to go a little lighter. And then as soon as they put the weights down, they're like, yeah, I think I could go up another, you know, 10 pounds. Like, no, no, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that technique wasn't very good. In fact, that was too heavy. You can't go up uh, 10 more pounds. It's not going to, it's not going to work. That's but, funny. Did yeah. you guys hear what's going on with uh, OnlyFans? <laughs> no, I, I don't mean, keep up with that. I, I yeah. don't lie. <laughs> look, how be, you know, look, you look how both of you guys get all fucking yeah. embarrassed and sweaty right there. Right I, okay, away. I don't. First like, what do you mean? <laughs> have you been watching me? What? Yeah. Huh? How do you know I have an account? No, yeah. Here's the thing. I do not understand how you can make money charging people for naked photos when the market is flooded with naked photos. Fo it's because there's a it. connection to the person. Mm. Uh, I don't look 
You don't think that matters? I, think yeah, that I matters. guess. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. this. There, uh, there's a. There's, there's not anybody in the world I would pay to see it, naked that I could care about. Uh, okay. Um, I feel like you're lying. Yeah. Uh, no, there is does, there is somebody, somebody, yes, that was a lie. <laughs> My wife listens to this podcast. Uh, yeah. That's what that was. I, feel like I, I have to say d- that, but yeah. pull up. So this is someone DM me this. So I, I, you need a fact check because I don't know for sure. But the rumor is because uh, they're they're trying to go big. I don't know if they're going public or trying to sell or what's happening right now. But they're going to be moving away from nudity. They're trying to become more more professional. That it's a, a professional platform. So they're going to re- they're going to they're going to eliminate ninety nine percent. Well, revenue? that's why I wanted to bring it up because I thought it was an interesting potential pivot. Like now, I get what they're trying to do: become more commercialized. Right? Sure. Obviously, that, that, that you know, if you're going to be cur- uh, introduced to all types of regular businesses as so a- So are they trying to go more the angle of finding bands or finding like like people that have audiences and, and make it like exclusively yeah, so like imagine us. out or something? Okay, so imagine us. So if we, uh, you know, let's pretend it was just one of us and um, I had built this following on Instagram, uh, you know, and I didn't have you guys in the mind pump and everything we're doing. And I wanted to build a a private uh, exercise uh, only fans, and basically you could follow along and train with me. Watch Adam work out in a speedo. And, <laughs> no, oh my bad. Uh, but train and it'd be on a very professional level that, it, and you get to follow along my workouts. But that it costs you, you know, nine ninety nine a month to be inside of it. So it's a it's a great platform if it was used that way. And I'm sure there's sell your sweaty t-shirt. I'm sure there is a percentage of people that are actually using it using it this way. Probably even more than we think. There's still a business with that. I could see that. And well, it, it, it makes yeah, sense. But, but you what you said, I think is. true true is that i think it would cannibalize it because i oh, i would think it's yeah. a larger percentage what are you reading doug is it, is it true it seems to be true they're looking for a billion dollars of funding that's why well, yeah, nobody yeah, wants to fund them because you're you're then you're connected to smut yeah you know what i'm yeah. saying so they're, they're they're trying to go that's mainstream a fun word smut yeah i know i pulled that but out i mean smut. to your point like how i mean how are you going to get that money if a majority of your money is come, or maybe we're wrong maybe it, maybe we can find this number out on what percentage of only fans are Revenue actually is, is uh, adult, adult content yeah mm. you know or are, are there actually it's a like 90 percent I, I mean guess. i'm with you i would because that's the only way that i knew, I, yeah, knew I know about of, it what do you guys know of any anything else on yeah what i just like, i just gave an example of how i think people some people use it okay um, do you know any anybody I've that does that personally Okay. Yeah, no, I've, I've seen I've some seen band it. guys using it, and the, but they're they're always like making sure to point that out, like you know, you're not, I'm not giving you dick pics and this. this is just yeah. you know, like letting you know like what's coming out and where we're gonna be tour wise. I mean, yeah, you could do a very uh, clean version of this. We could totally do that. I mean, we get people all the time. I mean, perfect example. Wednesdays we do the behind the scenes. You're doing that right now. Yeah, uh, you hate it. But yep. people love it. People uh, do, do more than double the views come in on our Wednesdays when people get to see a behind the scenes view. So there is a there's obvious uh, a demand for that. Mm-hmm. You could easily make money off that if you wanted to and say, hey, if you want to be get the behind the scenes of my inside of my life, what it's like with my kids and wife yeah. and what I eat and what I train. It's nine ninety nine a month, then you get access to that. So there's people that are using it. Other than just nudity, I just think that's what we know yeah, or what's most popular. It'd be interesting to see. It's weird, but yeah, maybe ends up happening. Speaking of uh, of which, with that kind of stuff, it's funny. I, I got messages because of that workout video, and then you know that they, we posted on the on the podcast channel on YouTube, and people are like, "Oh, why don't you guys do this kind of stuff more?" And you know, it, the the funny thing is when we started Mind Pump, and this is just for the audience. One of the things that we disliked most about fitness or the fitness industry, I should say was the way that it sold itself. And the way that it sold itself was, look how cool I am, look how buffed I am, look how ripped I am, or how sexy I am, look at my ass, look at my biceps, my abs, whatever, and then buy this product. We hated that so much that we never did it, and we didn't want to do it. Right. So it's very reluctant Like when, when we do stuff like that. I yeah. feel a part of me going like, oh, okay. I'm gonna, you know, because that's not the value. The value is not in how good or bad I look, it's in the information that I'm providing, how much it Im- impacts you. Well, yeah, and so the audience knows there was even conversations between uh, the four of us uh, after that video. That video is going viral right now. It's it's trending faster than most of the videos on the YouTube channel, which means more revenue for us, more traction, more leads. It seems like the obvious right. strategy for us to do more of that. And the comments are, please, more, 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 more. 
But the truth is, like we uh, we also don't want to get caught in that. Like that, just because it drives more revenue and more people want to see that, we also are trying to change the conversation around fitness. Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, this is this has been the strategy: show you how buff and strong and cool I am, and then sell you supplements or yeah. pedal shit to you. And so we are very resistant to that. I think we still are, even though we threw that out. Now I think it's cool because we have resisted it for so long and so consistently that it's fun to throw some of those yeah. out there. And that's the whole, that's why it's okay. But you know, really you, you don't want to, the big problem is, is that people place authority and mm -hmm. value on people in fitness who look good. So they're the ones that get all the value. And that's the problem. The problem is you go through social media and you see these like perfect looking bodies and we assume that that person has got good information, is actually healthy just because they look a particular way, and that their information will bring me value. And that's oftentimes not true, and it's actually the opposite. They have terrible advice, right. they're not healthy, and their information not only will not help you, but will actually harm you. And so that's the big challenge. It's always been the big challenge uh, in this space. And it really, you know, again, it's it's re very reluctant. It's like, all right, I'll do this thing, but I really don't like it. Now, that being said, thing. Mind Pump Memes 100% <laughs> crushed yeah. it. I'm so uh, glad. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it brings us down hey, to earth immediately. I love it. It's like, oh, man. That video, I must have watched it 10 times. Oh, I must have sent oh, it to 20 people because the video <laughs> of you grunting, lifting weights in your but wife, he's doing Peter, like little dog sounds. Oh, and, I, and I'm I'm pretty sure I got to ask him. Uh, I'll have to ask him if I, I think he dubbed it with his own voice. So I think he's, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, eh. so I think he actually dubbed it over on your Dude, I am so oh, unaware man. of my face and sounds when I work out. Did you ask, no ask Jessica what I asked or what? No, that's not what my it's not face your own is. face. <laughs> <laughs> No. That's what you think. No, yeah. come on, dude. Yeah. It don't look like I'm pain. <laughs> He's you know? like, I know. I jerk off in front of the mirror all the time. It yeah. looks nothing like you that. You don't do that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you can I answer that you. question, Adam. How do I look? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... Uh, <laughs> No, I, I am so on how good I look is how long it takes. So <laughs> unaware uh, of all that stuff. Anyway, um, I read a poll that just came out. So I have a lot of families up in San Francisco. Yeah. And a poll came out. You guys ready for, to hear this? It's crazy. Yeah. They polled San Francisco residents. And out of the poll, 40%, okay, it's almost half, 40% said they planned on leaving San Francisco forever. Not surprising. Because of the crime and the homelessness problem and just the Did decline. you see that video of there was like uh, literally a planned out crime where all these people, there was like probably like 10 people involved that just went into the store and just came out, just ransacked it and took all these like really expensive bags and, and purses and things. Yes. And just like, well, so car theft, got away with it. Car break ins, which were always high in San Francisco. Okay, let's be honest. 700% increase over the last three 700%. years. 700%. 700. And that's wow. the reported. It's gotten so bad that they that people don't even report it anymore. They're like, whatever. My cousin is like, yeah, if you park your car on the street, it's going to get broken into. Isn't that Gavin just, Newsom's district, right? Isn't yeah. come out of San Francisco? Oh, dude. I mean, you're doing a bang Do you think job. that's a, I mean, it's a poll, right? So it's, these are people speaking that are probably emotionally reacting to the current time right now, right? Still, they've done polls like this before. Never even close. I know. That's my point, though, is like, if you think that 40% of, you know what that would do? I mean, what that could, that would cripple a city, especially well, of that dude, size. They've tolerated crime for so long. I mean, I'm, here's the thing. I am, I don't disagree with you guys. I would probably be a part of that 40%, but I, I, I wonder how accurate that really is going to be. Like, do you really think that half of San Francisco is going to leave San Francisco? I don't think so, but well, it is, it does give you a finger on the pulse a little bit of yeah. how people are feeling. Yeah. And it's, it, it, what it is is that they've we'll passed, they change their votes. They've passed crazy laws where stealing, I think under like 900 dollars is you basically don't go to jail They're i know i've seen a yeah. ton of videos on that cvs it's like, was pulling out because it's everybody all, was coming so, in and just pull so pulling items off the shelves and putting it in a bag major retailers right so consider and this is this hurts me because i grew up in the bay area san francisco is yeah. it's it's one of so my favorite places little italy is there. there's great restaurants i used to go there all the time as a kid and it's our you know major city right for the bay area yeah and so it makes me very sad but when it's you have a beautiful place, you have major retailers, right? Target and Walgreens, which they've, you know, they've adjusted their hours. Target will now only be open until 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Target because of the theft. 
Yeah, they wow. can't stop it. And the, the, the employees are like, well, we can't do anything. And the police are like, yeah. we throw them in jail. They're out the next day and they go back and, and do the same exact thing. Yep. Walgreens is pulling out stores. Some major retailers <coughs> are pulling out well, their the, stores. I hope that like a documentary comes out about all this stuff eventually. But there is like so much organized crime within a lot of the homeless community that people oh, just is don't there want really? to acknowledge. Yes. Yes, there is. And, and this is something that the community is very privy to. Uh, and this is like, you know, that next door, yeah. so that, that serves. So there's been groups of, of, uh, people there that, um, like even in Santa Cruz County that have collectively added all their stories together and they're pinpointing these leaders that are, are, wow. you know, responsible for not only recruiting people from across the country to come there and because they're like, here's how you can get away with it. They tell them exactly where to stay. They tell them which wow. stores to hit up. Wow. They, they, they've organized where they actually have to pay these ringleaders money to stay in certain houses that they protect with, you know, it's, it's organized crime this so is, this is you don't want to acknowledge that you know like th that's honestly it's such a massively huge problem you can't just sit there and be oh you know all oh, these poor people well, you also have to look at the reality of what's happening yeah wow, that's would, crazy that's like the um the uh baltimore drug lords that were doing that with kids yeah in the towers over there right they were because they knew that kids can't be they wouldn't get uh thrown in jail like an 18 year old so they were using these minors really to, oh yeah the, the minors would be the ones handling the yeah. money and the drugs Dude. and then the kingpins would be disconnected from it so there would be a really it'd be hard for the cops to actually make the connection to them so they were, and if a kid got picked up, he'd get picked up and then basically taken back to his mom's and the next day. It would be like his we, cycle. We got needles all over our rivers going into the beaches now. Like it, I never thought about using it's homeless It's so like that. bad, dude. Like Not only that, like on this next door, like people are talking and communicating about like creating vigilante groups because the cops aren't doing anything about it. The city council members aren't doing anything about it. They're literally going to start taking action in their own hands because they're so fed yeah, up. That's not going to go well. That's, it's that's not going to go well for yeah. anybody. Well, speaking, that's not what we want. Speaking of taking advantage of laws that way, I read this article about this guy who lives in Long, Long Island who's been taking advantage of the eviction laws over there. So he's been a squatter, right? So squatter somebody that just stays yeah. in a house that they don't own. You want to guess how long he's been in there taking advantage of the laws and he knows how to play the game to keep himself from getting kicked oh, out? How long? 23 years. What? what? 23 years wow. he's been in his house. He's filed. He probably four, makes hella money too. He well, he's filed four lawsuits, declared bankruptcy seven times, and can't be kicked out because of the way that the laws are organized. And he knows how to work the system. So for twenty three years, he's been living in a house totally rent free in New York, in Long Island. What a do, do the math on what's the average rent in Long Island, which I'm gonna guess is somewhere in the two thousand to three thousand minimum. So say two, three thousand. How many years you said? Twenty three times twelve. Then by twenty three, how much money has this dude saved over that over that time? Yeah. What is it, Doug? It depends on the size of the house. Yeah, but it, oh, there's not like an average rent. You didn't do average rent of Long well, Island. Well, I did. Oh, uh, but okay. Let's just say twenty five hundred dollars. Okay, that's a good guess. Um, that's what I thought. Twenty five hundred times twelve. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we'll do the math here. Yeah, I'm carry the two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, well, the, the number guys. Four now. He said twenty-two years. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. That's uh, six hundred ninety thousand in today's wow. dollars. Well, so hey, yeah. check this out, right? So the house got transferred to another bank or whatever, and this bank, they're like, we got to get him out of the house. Okay, remember he's been living there forever, not paying anything. The bank's like, how? Do, what do we do? They offered him twenty thousand dollars cash to leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> He's making money. Wow. He's making money. They offered him 20 yeah, grand. What's that called? It's called uh, keys. Something there's a, there's that's, that's a strategy that like uh, they do on foreclosures. I forget what you call that, but that's common practice. Like if you're, if there's somebody who's living in a house that's foreclosed on and there's somebody who wants to pick the foreclosure up, the cash for keys, that's what it's called. Mm. So they, they do cash for keys where the, to incentivize the person to leave the house and get out of there and not destroy it or doing like that. They do like a cash for keys where these people that are already getting foreclosed on, already not paying their, their mortgage, also get a kickback on, on their way out. Super wow. What so am I doing paying like rent and stuff? Well, yeah. I'm a sucker. Why are we working so hard? This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm going to I'm gonna take a left turn and talk a little bit about some tech science news. I just read something very interesting about Google's latest quantum computer. That blew my mind. Okay. Blew my mind. And you understand everything you read. 
Because every time I read those articles, it's like no. But I understand. I, no I understood. The, I, underst- I understood the speed at which this thing processes. Well, okay. I was going to say, right. start this at the very low level for me here. So the a quantum computer is supposed to be able to do what? First of all, it processes at speeds that normal computers can't even come close to. Yeah, can't even touch. Okay, okay? but through using quantum mechanics, and that's as far as we're going to go. But okay, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> no idea what that means. It, it's, it's, hey, that. it has a big flux capacitor in it, is yes. what you're yeah, saying to me. Yeah. Hey, do you guys? Do you, you ever can't want... even quantify it because yeah. it's quantum. Wow. I'm, I'll go back. To, I'll get back to the statistic. But do you guys remember that show? It was popular in the '90s. Quantum Leap. I think it was yeah. called. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Remember that guy? I love that show. Oh, yeah. Where he like shouldn't he be in like someone else's body? Yeah. 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 It was, yeah, it was kind of a good show. I love that. You look in the mirror and be like, oh hey. Yeah. Oh, I'm. That's you know, who I am. I'm yeah. a woman today. Yeah. Whatever today. Totally. Yeah. And the the music was very stood out. Anyway, so check this out. Right. So this this is the part I understand. So they took a math problem that a normal computer, the fastest computer, would take 10,000 years to, to figure out. So they took this problem, this very complex problem, and they know that a regular computer or equation or something like that would take 10,000 years to solve. We have a math problem that would take that It's long? not a math problem. It's an equation, and I don't know how to explain it, but let's just- Okay. okay see, no, see, no, don't do the whole fucking- <laughs> Well, thing. I can't. It's not I'm trying to prove you wrong. It's just that I, right away, that sounds weird to me. Like, how do we- Who writes the the math problem so, that takes 10,000 like years a to Damon solve? Sounds like a Matt Damon movie. That is, makes, I don't know. But they just said, look, it's a problem that they know based on all the variables and whatever would take the average computer or the, av- the fastest computer- 10,000 years to solve. Okay. Wow. Google's quantum computer solved it in three minutes. Wow. That's the difference in speed between the two of them. And now, now keep in mind, the quantum computer like technology is in its infancy, Yeah. which still hasn't even- So come. another question that you're probably not going to be able to answer is like, so where does this apply in real life? What? Yeah. So oh, okay, pr- what predictive what, analytics? Oh my God! Like, you, if you're trying to figure out uh, equations for dark matter or for complex genomes, or he, here's where it gets really crazy for me. I mean, I didn't even know that the, there. I didn't know that a, a computer struggles with some of these math problems. I thought almost all computers are just like a, like a calculator. As fast as I can push it in and do plus or minus or times whatever. Uh, I think it it's more complex back. than that. Yeah. Oh, but, obviously, because yeah. you just said there's a math problem that takes ten thousand years for computers, yeah. so it's not. Unless it's the typing that takes uh, ten thousand no, years. No, no, no. <laughs> get it, get it. <laughs> stupid. I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it either. But here's, here's the part <laughs> that sounds really. Here's the part that blows me away, right? Uh, cracking passwords. So uh, if a computer is trying to crack a password, oftentimes it has to go through. And let's say there's yeah. a password that's ten figures or whatever right, long. There's 100,000 different it, variables. It's numbers. It's, uh, you know, it's letters. It could be uppercase, lowercase. It could be symbols, right? So, there's so like, how is cryptocurrency going to be uh, safe? I don't know. So that's what I'm saying. So like to figure something like that out, there's a formula and to figure out every possible Is that whatever, what makes cryptocurrency so- uh, It's because it's encrypted, right? Yeah, well, it's not encrypted. It's uh, it's, it's on encrypted? blockchain. Yeah. Is, that, blockchain. is that what makes blockchain so? I mean, this is, we're so yeah, out of my league right now yeah. talking about. This. Yeah, I let's know. talk about bench pressing. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah, and f you if you think that you know all this stuff because I haven't met anybody who can explain this very well. I, to I saw a Joey Schwal video break down, <laughs> yeah, and that's Joey, that's the level. Can we I'm call at, Joey, dude. please. Yeah, please get Joey on the phone. Joey yeah. to break down. Yeah. Tell me, brilliant to break down some blockchain. Yeah, but think about like passwords and shit won't mean anything. Because it'll figure out right away with every possible you know variable or whatever it, it'll be able to process it all in, almost instantaneously. Yeah. So yeah. what the hell is that going to be? You know, what's, geez. I mean, that's going to be crazy. eventually they're going to tell us how to live. Well, think about it this way: more powerful computers have to figure out, uh, have to process and figure out equations to produce like graphics. So like CGI now compared to CGI 10 okay, years ago. Okay, thank you. Now, that that translates to me. That right. makes sense because like, I know that in order to do something like that, that right. takes a ton so of So imagine effort. going into a fully immersed CGI world where it's connected to you somehow, to your brain, and you feel like you're in another world. Mm-hmm. That would take computing power that is just it doesn't even exist, right? Yeah. Quantum computing potentially could do that wow. to where... Now it can literally create a you reality. You can't even distinguish the pixels or anything anymore. It's just all... What kind of brains does it take to pro- to create something like this? Uh, well, of, the thing of, is you create it and then it keeps re- creating itself. <laughs> Tons of brains. Yeah, There's a lot of brains involved. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Oh, let's see here. So it, blockchain is not immune to hacking, but being decentralized gives blockchain a better line of defense. To uh, alter a chain, a hacker or criminal would need control of more than half of all the computers in the same 
distributed ledger. It's unlikely but possible. Okay, so yeah, but they're not talking about quantum computers. Yeah, all so. of that meant nothing to me. I have yeah, no idea what exactly. I just read. Well, what it what it what it does say oh, is that it's go. not Bring immune it to ha- it's not immune to hacking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so and and if you're saying that we're that's about to have I mean. this computer like, that can do crazy shit like that's that, that's a concern of mine. I yeah. mean, I would be concerned. The concern that you're going to get your blockchain. Well, wasn't if it all you? my money's in blockchain? Yeah. Well, wasn't it you? Was it one of you guys that brought up Snow, what Snowden said about it? I think. Oh, yeah. he You did. Oh, it was me. Yeah. No. <laughs> Sometimes I just say smart Who shit. Who was it? Was that some other guy? <laughs> <laughs> your, your brain's always making room for new information. <laughs> yeah, I already said it. Get rid it of it. Prune that off. We don't yeah. need that anymore. No, he did. He said that the, the wallets or the services that you buy them through are easily hackable. Yeah. So you're until block- they solve that, yeah. Until they solve that, then you're, you know, then you're totally completely screwed. Oh, so anyway, yeah. so I want to ask you, Adam. Now that we have you on camera, I noticed oh, that wow. you were sitting there with a box of uh, magic spoon and just eating oh. it like <laughs> yeah. a stoner. We just like got, eating, we just got no, strawberry in and homeboys already no, like no, no milk. Box. You just put your hand in the box. Well, one of you crunch- turds ate all the bars that were in. So I've been lately this more than the mornings. I've been, so I put. Uh, I don't. I should shout the company out because this is a company that sent us free stuff. And I've been eating their protein bars. I actually like them, and I, I, I don't know the, the brand, so I'm I think it's Mountain more. Ops. What did you say? Mountain Ops. I Mountain believe? Ops. Those I guys. Think so. Okay, so yeah. shout out to those guys. They had some bars that I really like. So, anyways, I'm I've been eating them in, in the mornings, and uh, this morning was so hungry, and I was like, oh, sorry, right, I will get to work. I'll have a bar right away. I went in there, none gone. So somebody else ate you it. You know, it's not me. That's I can't have. Yeah, and then I went to go look for our Paleo Valley beef jerky. None sure, gone. Even though we though. just got an order of that, so that was completely gone. And then I saw a magic spoon, and Doug normally has some uh, macadamia nut milk inside the uh, refrigerator, but there was none of that in there either. So I just said, "F it, I'm going to eat the cereal by itself." Yeah. And we also we just got the new flavors though. So they just got Dry scooping strawberry and banana. Banana. Thank you, Doug. Uh, and I was I was uh, dry. What would you call it? Dry cereal?ing yeah. What? <laughs> that's a new thing. Was, yeah. Hashtag dry, dry scooping. Yeah, dry cereal. Dry- that was dry cereal. No, that's uh, that's, a, that's what stoners do, right? Yeah, just eat it yeah. Out of the box. yeah. I mean, it's, I, it's so good. I the one thing I was talking to Andrew off air about Magic Spoon the other day, and he's like, "Hey, you know." I, I haven't quite fallen in love with Magic Spoon the same way you guys have, and I'm like, really? I'm like, why? And he's like, well, you know, it kind of sticks to your teeth. I was like, oh yeah, no, it definitely sticks to your teeth, but that's because the the all these other brands that make cereal, like that is like a major thing that they focus on, and they put all kinds of chemicals and shit in there yep. to make sure it doesn't do that. Where because this is all natural and real stuff, and you did get you do get that a little bit, and so I just remind myself as I'm getting it out of my teeth that it's like, well, that's what I get for eating something that's well, healthy, grain free, whey protein, yeah, no sugar, no sugar. Like, it's like yeah, it's a magic. No, formula. yeah, good, good luck. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely have some crunchy, hard, doesn't stick in your teeth fruit. No, I got. Another but question for you, for you, because I know you grew up and you had you guys had money challenges growing up. Mm. Uh, did you ever eat cereal with water? Oh, I have. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Really? You oh, just yeah. run out of milk. Oh, and yeah, throw some that's water. exactly what happens. So there's yeah. many many times where, in fact, I mean, I, I grew up in a, in a, a time or whatever where we, you, we watched milk prices, right? So like, if milk was, I was like, oh shoot, milk milk is up, you know, like we, were, we had a ration, <laughs> we have to ration it, you know what I'm saying? Or you know, or the like the, the stock market. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Up today. Real talk though, yeah. dude. Like, I mean, kids, I, we're having water. <laughs> I, I mean, it, that seems the so crazy. It's crazy to me today, right? Because I, I uh, you know, I haven't looked at something like that in a really long time, and to think that for most of my young life. I could tell you the price of milk, like you know, oh, it's two eighty nine right now. Oh, it's three twenty. Right? I, I wow. mean, I, yeah, I would be able to tell you that as a kid. Where I've no, I've, I don't even know what milk is right now. Do you know wow. what milk is a gallon? No, no idea. Doug, what's milk a gallon? Expensive. You know? I feel like good you would know. question. I feel like it's like six, seven eight bucks. bucks. Oh my god, look yeah. at you guys, a bunch of freaking. I, I do some shopping. Oh. Yeah, uh, Justin I, I contribute to the house. Yeah. Tr- Justin's a milky guy. But, he just well, then crushes. again, I, yeah, I drink a lot of milk too. He does. Yeah. I know when we go my wheelhouse. Did you not get any sun when we were out trucking? What do you mean? He's hella dark for him. Dude, That's dark. Don't enjoy, pull him up that high. Enjoy. Jesus. What are you doing? <laughs> because, dude, I like not like everybody else. I don't care. <laughs> I'm like, not out there just. Ooh, I need to get dark. I like the light. Yeah, shut up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I care so. Don't much. be a hater because you I can't. Care. <laughs> you know, yes. like, that's everybody, oh, dude. God, Stop that's... caring so much. By what? the way, it's three dollars and sixty cents a gallon. According to this average wow, price, that was way off. I'm assuming though that's non-organic and, and that type of thing. And yeah, not California. We, we like the good stuff. Yeah. And is that a lot? I mean, I don't even know if that's a lot. Sure, that seems like it's cheap to me. But 
I, well, I remember. It was, I mean, it was down in the two. It was two something, maybe even a dollar or something when we were when we were really young. I know that like milk was uh, for sure. I remember it in the twos. I don't know if I remember it a dollar. I thought, I thought I remember a buck eighty nine. That's in my head for right now. So, yeah. You so, ever drink powder milk? Oh uh, yeah. So when you get like food from those like uh, you know food line or cupboard store like yeah. places or whatever, I forget what you call those. Um, they normally do stuff like that. So because they get food donated, yeah, and powdered milk stays good for a really long time. So we would we would get powdered milk. We get all the generic cereal. So yeah, I've had all now when you powder milk, you just add water and boom, it's milk. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, yeah, it that's tastes, not bad. Tastes terrible. Yep. It's like oh, really? military yeah, rations. Yeah, 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 no, it tastes it tastes terrible. Well, I mean, probably tastes like baby formula. I'm sure it tastes similar to that. Mm. Something. Oh, and speaking of baby formula, I was going to ask you guys: Have you guys are you, is Jessica still breastfeeding, or is she transitioned out of that? No, she's still breastfeeding. Oh, she still is right yeah. now too. How long she plan to go? Do you know? Maybe and, like and a have year. Have you tasted it? No, huh? Yeah. I'm just asking. <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay. Tastes like cantaloupe juice. Good. I, I still respect you. Cantaloupe juice? Cantaloupe. Yeah. Really? It's like sweet, like cantaloupe oh, juice. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, there's a sweetness, but cantaloupe. Is, yeah. Go go eat a cantaloupe. There's a fruitiness. Drink to the it? juice. Boom. Breast okay. milk. That's what it tastes I'll like. Have to try it. But yeah, she's still breastfeeding. <laughs> I don't like the face you're making right now. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> you make a very creepy face. So I'm talking about. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hey, hey. I hope when, when, when <laughs> Andrew edits this, he shows your face while I'm just talking about time. how the breast milk tastes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, what? <laughs> what the hell, bro? Mm, mm, really? <laughs> what does it taste like? Liar. I, I, Let me try. I think I took a little bit, but I didn't really. I really didn't taste much. Everyone kept asking me that if I if I drank any of it. I don't remember. I think yeah, I took just a little like taste. Yeah, I, I think didn't I did like a little taste. It. I didn't drink any. No, neither yeah. did I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a little weird. A little bit from the source, yeah. but I mean, shit. I mean, can you think of <laughs> anything that makes it's like more anabolic? I mean, my son's growing like crazy. Like we no, have some no. of that shit. Let's see what happens. I, I mean, I really think I th I believe it makes a difference. I mean, there's, yeah, it does. I, we, I think it's like every couple of years, like new research comes out about something amazing about mother's milk. Yep. That's just wild. Mm -hmm. I think I, it blew my mind because I don't think it was this. I don't think this is that old as far as the science on this. When they found out. That it actually changes, right? As as like if the baby is sick or whatever like that, all of a sudden, or yeah. in the morning versus oh, the yeah. evening. Yeah, morning, evening, like that. That fascinates me. That's like, crazy yeah, I know. to to think that, and and not changing consistently with every other mother, very specific to that baby. It's reacts like, to the baby's saliva. The yeah. Baby latches on, and then it reacts to the saliva. Yeah. of the child. So when you hear that, it always blows my mind when people try and argue that, like, oh, it's not that big of a deal and like a formula is fine. They Science figured it out. You know what I'm saying? Like formula is great. It's like, dude, it's, I mean, it's you, an if alternative, you, but yeah. It's oh, I mean, it, it's it it science is amazing that if you're in a situation where a mother's not producing milk or something, you yeah. know, we, yeah, thank it's God a godsend, right? Yeah, yeah it, it's, ama it's yeah. amazing for that. But if you have the option you know, like you, you, you are not going to get something better than that. It just mm. doesn't. Do, science hasn't got, came that far. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but we got quantum computers. Hey, real quick. I hope you're enjoying this podcast. Head over to fromyouflowers.com forward slash flower forward slash mind pump. Send some flowers to someone you love. Check out the discounts that we have on there. Really cool stuff. Fast delivery. Great looking flowers. Be a good person. Make somebody happy with some flowers. Again, from you flowers.com forward slash flower forward slash mind pump. All right. Enjoy the rest of this podcast. Our first caller is Jackie from New Jersey. Hey, Jackie. How can we help you? Hey. So thank you for quick taking my question. I've been listening to you guys forever, so I appreciate it. Um, to give you a little bit of background context, I am eight months pregnant, um, former athlete and personal trainer, fitness director. So um, have been into weightlifting for probably about six to seven years or so. Um, I have done MAPS Aesthetic and Strong and love them both. Um, currently training about two to three times a week. That's it right now. Um, kind of like a phase two in aesthetics, um, if I'm feeling up for it right now. Um, so I have a two-part question. The first part is, can I still make physical progress in the third trimester, or should I really just focus on trying to move and like trying to feel good. And second part would be, you know, post baby, once I'm cleared, of course, um, how do I measure what's too much and how do I, you know, what program do I do? What, what, how do I get back into things? Yeah, no. This is so common with athletes and trainers and coaches. Of course. Mm -hmm. to, to, you know, shut off the, uh, 
athletic competitive mindset of I want to make gains and progress. Impossible. Yeah. And uh, absolutely is not. I mean, I had to have this conversation. Dominate this pregnancy. Katrina yeah. is the same way. She's a collegiate athlete. She's been into fitness for many years. Uh, she was in great shape going into the pregnancy. And so this was the same conversation I had to have with her is like, honey, uh, this is not about making gains or progress in your body right now. It's about maintaining being healthy. And it's all about the health of the baby, not about you at this moment. And so you got to remind yourself that is that, you know, and you're and like I told her, you, you, it's amazing how resilient the body is, especially for someone like you who's been training for as long as you've been training. Uh, your body's going to bounce right back, and your priority should not be to try and make gains. It should be about optimizing how you feel on a daily basis. Yeah. Now this is now. Of course, there's going to be some people that can progress in the third trimester. I, I really, really, really advise against even aiming for that. Now, the first trimester totally different. Uh, that's like uh, you know the first and second trimester, depending on if you have morning sickness and all that stuff. Sometimes people's performance gets better. But what you're really trying to do is set yourself up for a, a great rebound after you have the baby. And then, of course, it improves or impacts the health of the baby. In fact, I just uh, read a study that talked about how the ability of a baby or a child to build muscle and burn body fat is actually improved when the mother exercises, probably you know, due to gene expression, right, Dirt because of the environment that the baby's in. Um, but yeah, no, you're, you're going to go in and just listen to your body, train yourself to kind of maintain a little bit. Obviously in the third trimester, you're not going to do a lot of core exercises like you did before. There's probably a lot of split stance exercises you're not going to be able to do because your belly's in the way, yada, yada, yada. Post-pregnancy, here's the deal. Go way easier than you think, okay? When you have, especially in the third trimester with the stretching of the abdominal, the transverse abdominus, the core muscles, your core stability is going to be non-existent compared to where it's been before. If you attempt to train the way you did before, the risk of causing problems or creating really bad recruitment pattern issues is quite high. MAPS starter would be an ideal program post-pregnancy. Now, here's the good news. Adam said how resilient you'll be. Oh, my gosh. If you lift weights, build muscle, the resilience, even if you don't exercise, let's say something happens – you have a C-section, you got you can't train, whatever. Boy, is the body resilient. It's really insane. Like my wife, you know, she worked out real hard pre and then during pregnancy and after pregnancy, she couldn't train for a while. And her body barely changed because of the muscle uh, that she had built. But go easier than you think. You'll get there faster that way than if you go, you know, if you try to push yourself. So real easy. Take your time. You'll find at about month six postpartum, Six to month nine is when really things start to feel kind of good. Some of this depends on breastfeeding. By the one year mark, you're gonna be you're gonna be flying. So give yourself some time. All right, it's awesome. Thank you. No problem. Do you have access, by the way, to Map Starter? Um, I don't. You do now. We're gonna send hey. that. Over. We'll send that <laughs> over to you. Sal would say, "Check Thank your you right that. pocket." Yeah, I like that. <laughs> no, what yes. that? Uh, hey, by the way, congratulations on the on the. Thank pregnancy. you. Thank you very much. That's right. You know yeah. if it's a boy or a girl. It's a girl. Oh, that's great. Right. Yeah. yeah, a little girl. Seven, September girl in our family, so. Oh, yeah. uh, wonderful, wonderful. Congratulations. Awesome. Thanks yep. for calling in. Thank you, guys. I remember managing gyms, and I would have, of course, female staff, right? And they were all typically into fitness. And I remember distinctly there was this one period of time where I had this female trainer and this uh, Group X instructor, both pregnant at the same time. And it was a big deal because they were both pregnant and they'd come to the gym, everybody knew or whatever. The Group X instructor was a obviously a cardio fanatic. Classes and spin classes and, you know, at the time it was step classes. That was a big deal. Mm -hmm. The trainer was straight up resistance training, strength training fanatic. Love lifting weights, the whole thing. It was incredible. Now, of course, this is not technically a study because it's only two people but i remember watching uh, yeah i know exactly the, oh, the difference in their bodies afterwards oh, oh yeah. dude how, the, how quickly they bounce back oh the strength training trainer like it was insane how she bounced back and the other trainer the other excuse me uh, group x instructor actually after a while came to the other trainer and was like oh, my body isn't responding what's going on and she's like you need to lift weights yeah. 
So that's when I, I that's the first time well, I really saw that. Difference. All the work, yeah, in the first two trimesters, which is you know what you kind of brought up. I remember even with Courtney, it was the same thing. Like uh, between the difference between the two boys, you know, pregnancies because the second one was a little more difficult, and there was you know issues in terms of her being able to uh, work out. Uh, uh, it was it was complete contrast. Uh, you know how quickly she bounced back. You know with with, with our first. So yeah, it's that's that's the majority of the work going. Uh, you know into the recovery process. So like the third trimester is like, okay, let's just get ready. Yeah. I was amazed by how fast uh, Katrina bounced back. And you know, I've read a lot of stuff on um, the, the, what they estimate, like the calorie burn that or metabolism boosting that you get from um, breastfeeding. And I don't know how much I subscribe to how accurate a lot of those are. Cause I think there's a, a major variance for per women and stuff. Yeah. But boy, did Katrina have a huge one. Uh, Courtney did too. Oh my God. Uh, Katrina, I was, it blew my mind. I was just like, Whoosh. yeah, she was building muscle and leaning out like and eating like crazy. I was so mm -hmm. fascinated with how her body was morphing and changing like week over week with the amount of calories that she was consuming because the breastfeeding completely sped her metabolism up. So it definitely worked in her favor. Our next caller is Jake from North Carolina. What's up, Jake? How can we help you? Hey guys, what's going on? I'm stoked to be here. So um, a little bit of background first. Uh, I'm a personal trainer and a boxing for MMA coach. Uh, my education is in international relations and national security. Uh, so through that, I met a lot of special operations guys and it's became kind of a research interest of mine as to how to train them as effectively as possible. So the problem is a lot of their programming really sucks and it's outdated and has them drastically overtraining while still neglecting things like agility, mobility, and strength, and focusing a lot on like calisthenics and long form cardio. So a lot of these guys don't have proper weight training until they get to their units and the amount of injuries is really high. Um, so I guess my question is, uh, when these people have control over their own training or when we as trainers have control over their training, how do we balance all these adaptations of like building strength, endurance, muscular endurance, mobility and athleticism and all this stuff while they're still doing things like gunfighting and hand to hand fighting and sky and sea diving and, and all this stuff that, that also costs time and energy to learn. So how do you periodize that? And then how do you program like even on the small level, the micro cycles and stuff? Because I hear you guys advise all the time to pick a priority, right? So if somebody calls in and asks you guys, how do I train for a half Ironman? You say, okay, well, maybe lift one time a week and then focus on the swim, bike, run. So when these guys have all of these things that are priorities, how do they, how do they manage that? Yeah, no, that's a fun, good, fun question. Yeah, it's a good question. And it's like the million dollar question for, for anybody who trains people like this. This is actually the most challenging yeah. aspect of it. Now, uh, of course, there's individual uh, variances and in how you would train each person, but let's go general first. Here's the beauty, part of the beauty of strength training. You don't have to do a ton of it to, to reap some of its benefits. Because the people you're talking about are, are required to have all these skills and all these physical attributes, um, strength being a big part of it, I would not need, these people do not need to do more than one or two days a week of traditional strength training. In fact, I would probably do one day a week of traditional strength training Another day a week where it's you know more geared specific to what they're looking to do with resistance training. And really the rest of the week, you're focusing a lot on conditioning and skills. Skills being the most important thing. Now, you being a boxing coach for MMA, you know probably more than anybody that your skill in boxing is probably the most important thing. And then second being your ability to have stamina. Well, when these guys and girls uh, are are engaging with other people, um, you know that stamina could be life or death, and the skill definitely is life or death. So most of the energy is going to be focused there. Strength training, resistance training, once or twice a week, and once of it, one day a week is going to be that kind of traditional barbell build, you know, kind of that base. And, and then the other day, like I said, it's going to be a little bit more specific to the individual. Yeah. You're focusing on the things that they they lack in, right? So whichever, whatever, if they're less, they have less endurance. So that's, I'm going to put a little bit more focus on that mm -hmm. with that person. If they, if they have less mobility and flexibility and or they get injured a lot, then I'm putting more energy in that direction. But this, you know, you know, this, this question reminds me of, and I'm curious to hear your guys' opinion on this. 
Um, you follow the guy, uh, his name, I think his Instagram oh, handle. Tactical. Yes, Real World Tactical. Real, uh, tactical. That guy's is that animal. right, Andrew? Is real, real, real World Tactical, you know who that is? Yeah, yeah I follow that guy. That okay. Guy's awesome. badass. Yeah. Right, yeah, you super badass dude, right? And I'm always curious to like, you know, I, like people that are following him, like how many of these people are like going and trying to emulate with Yeah, because I don't know if those are his workouts or those are his video workouts right. for the media. So oh, that's right. what I'm trying, That's and that's what I'm alluding to right now. Like, do you think that way of training, like he's like doing crazy endurance very crossfitty type of training yeah. and but he's also uh including some of his tactical stuff in there right so he'll be like dr dragging tires something like that and then he'll do like a roll with a gun and then fire it i mean yeah. i mean very entertaining to watch but when i look at it i go like you know i wonder if if i were to get a special ops guy if my training would look like this or would i be way more tailored and specific to mm -hmm. who, who i'm training and and i wouldn't this is very flashy cool shit to watch but in reality i think i'd be very more specific to my special ops guy and figuring out oh where is he lacking yeah. and then building my core around the things that he is the weakest in to develop that and bring it up and probably doing less of what he's really strong in yeah, yeah i think it's really difficult to have like a generalized kind of standard for programming this because there's so many different different attributes you're trying to acquire. Uh, I, I think like it, as far as what I would look at it in terms of priorities, I definitely would want to make sure that there's lots of, you know, recuperative type of, you know, mobility practices uh, instilled uh, every single day. And that's just something that because of it's, you know, they're going through so much body stress. Um, you know, that's something that I would prioritize that, you know, beginning and, you know, all throughout the day uh, to to really make sure that, you know, longevity is considered uh, while going through all this sort of chaotic uh, type of, of stress on the body. Uh, but but to Sal's point, like really just one, two times a week with the actual strength training part. But the skills is what, you know, is the utmost priority with with, you know, that, uh, you know, pursuit. Yeah. And, you know, here's a here's a big mistake people like this often make is they emulate the training of athletes. Now here's why there's a big difference between the way an athlete trains and the way people like this train. Let's say you're going to compete in uh, you're going to compete in a mixed martial art event. You are training and peaking for a specific date. Okay. So you're, there's an off season, there's an right, on right. season, you're yeah. peaking. Okay. These guys have to be ready at all times. There, right. and you there's can't, a timeline there, which, yeah, this is all the time. This is an infinite timeline. If you train these people like they're trying to peak, you're going to overtrain them. Yeah. Okay. There is no peaking because it happens all the time. So really what it is, is you're training them below that peak intensity because they're just ready. They got to kind of be ready all the time. Now, why are skills so important? I mean, come on. You could be the fittest, most awesome person in the world, but if you can't accurately fire your gun or operate under duress, none of that really matters. So, you know, a base of strength, maintain the mobility so you reduce injury, do some athletic well, training in there, and then skill, skill, well, skill, skill, skill. Let's be even more specific. I feel like we're giving my boy like nothing right now. Just fucking talking about a bunch of stuff that he's already heard from us. Like, so let's kind of build that right as generic but as specific as we possibly can so would you guys would it look like this what's coming to mind to me right now is i think i would have a one to two day a week very foundational maps anabolic-esque training routine and then i would have three to five days depending on what what how much they're handling throughout the week of skills training. And then the way I would dictate the skills training would be I would write a list of all the things from hand to hand combat to endurance to rucking to, you know, body weight strength. I'd have all these priorities of these things that they should be able to accomplish. And then I would have skills training days and we would. We would order them in the order of priority, meaning that I would do more of whatever I think this uh, special ops person needs the, the biggest help in. Right. And I would focus mostly on those skill days which, and just complement one to two days with like a, a full body type of anabolic. With, with a real heavy emphasis on recovery uh, yes. and how to get to that point. And so this is where something like HRV, you know, would be something in my mind would, would make a lot of sense in this situation because to be able to monitor their overall accumulation of stress would be very valuable uh, to see like you know where they're at in terms of uh, the beginning of, of the day you know versus uh, you know the end of the day and then the next to to be able to to manage that appropriately now would you guys agree though that this is the type of client though that you would flirt with 
with overtraining more than undertraining because it's not an athlete who's trying to peak and because I want like mental I want mental and physical resiliency from this person I'm probably going to flirt with that line more often than not than the other way around because I, I don't care if he loses a little bit of muscle or he didn't or he uh, trained a little bit o- overtrained so long as I'm looking out for injury and I'm not overtraining in that way but as far as uh, training there their endurance and their their mental fortitude to get through because I feel like that's so important. Like you you don't want to be so concerned of like oh I don't want to like overreach a little bit because I want to build the most muscle for this person when I know that that shit doesn't matter when they get out into the real world and they got to fucking fight for their life and they got to go for sixteen hours straight with no sleep. Right? Yeah, I would go the opposite. No, I would not flirt with overtraining because when you're pushing that line all the time and remember this is a job so they're doing it all the time, right? So now you're at the line. You're doing this job all the time. Life is stressful. I think that would be a mistake. What I would do is I would play under Mm. overtraining. The resistance training I would do is 30 to 45 minutes. That's it. So 30 to 45 minutes once or twice a week. The other three to four days a week, you're looking at about an hour of training and then additional 30 minutes of mobility, and that's it. Now, that doesn't sound like you're getting them peaked and ready, but what we're talking about is a long-term fitness readiness. I mean, I tell you what, when I'm on the border line of overtraining, I'm not in my peak performance. I'm pushing to get to peak performance, but you imagine maintaining that all the time. You you don't agree that you're going to have to flirt with that at least once a week or once a month where you are pushing that, trying to push that for for the mental fortitude reason and for them to push the intensity like that because- Well, they probably have days already structured for that. Yeah, and that's going to happen naturally. And you're talking about people who, and maybe if they're beginners and they just signed up for the police academy and they got to kind of figure it out. But when somebody's at this point, like they've got what they kind of need, they just need to maintain their health health, their fitness. Well, I being I have not trained a lot of special ops people. So I the complete transparency here so we know that I'm not a fucking expert in this yeah, field. So right. I, I think I would want to know that because here you have to understand that so if they if okay, I agree with you guys if if that is built in. Because but you can't train this person uh, always under a little bit for an hour when then real quick they're going to be out in the field for 16 hours and be beat up all day long and you're and that's like the most intense thing they've ever experienced I, because I, you haven't given them that I all. think they'll be more uh, prepared and better to deal with those things if they're good fit but within but under yeah. that limit of overtraining. I would only do that if I could test it immediately and see like yeah. again with heart rate and things like that or like you know lactate threshold or Dude. you know whatever well, like I love those types yeah. of tests because then I can actually I love appropriately that. see how quickly I can recover I, from I, the stress. I love what you're saying there because you know our good friend Corey Schlesinger who shout out to him right now who is out there with the Suns who are in the championship right now is the is the strength yeah. and conditioning coach who came on the show and talked about how he utilizes HRV I, I think that this would be extremely valuable with these athletes for that exact reason, because I feel like there, there's got to be, when I look at their heart rate variability and go, oh, he is fully rested tomorrow, I'm bringing the heat on him. I want him to, uh, we're going to stretch his capacity tomorrow, and then I'm going to back off, and then I'm going to scale back. But I, I want to be, I do want to push my special ops guy for the mental fortitude reason, like this, it's well, that, that, in this situation, mental fortitude is probably one of the highest priorities. Of course, yeah. and, and so of, it, to be able to get into that calm state uh, is everything. I feel like Sal, your guy's going to be a pussy. My no. guy's going to beat you up no, and down no, all no, day no. long, bro. No, no, they're not. Look, by if the, you're going to be under training them all no, the time. No. By the time you're there, that's you've already proven that you're you're you've already got some of that. And again, the biggest mis- I've trained uh, special ops. I've trained SWAT people. I've worked with them. I, when I did jujitsu, I had a lot of people right after at that level. People. Yes, <laughs> right after zoo people. <laughs> and you know what the biggest problem was? The biggest problem was people that were always after it all the time. They were just chronically. Right. Overtrained. I, I, okay, so that's why I brought more up the, prone to That's why I brought up the real yeah. world tactical guy because I don't subscribe to training like that all the time. Because I know that that type of training, day in day out, would be way too much for the average special ops person I'd be training. Yeah. But it, I, you have to agree that the, 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 the like Justin said, the, the mental fortitude has to be one of the top priorities, and so you got to stretch that capacity sometimes. Yeah, and, they, and, and you're you're trying to say that oh, if they got to special ops, they've they've done that before. So what? You're just gonna not have to. You're not gonna no, train it's, that ever. It's already part of their training. That's already included. well. Okay, now that's. Do you know that? I don't know that. I do absolutely. This is they. They still do training on a regular basis. Their practices still involve a lot of that. But I, like I said, I think if you're, it's okay if you're training somebody who's going to go on a mission, 
very different than if you train somebody who this is what they do all the time. It can happen at any moment. Like, well, J- Jake, do you know? Sorry, we haven't even brought you in this conversation very much. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh, no, you're good. You're good. Um, I would say when so a lot of times their their training pipelines are like two years, and it's very very focused on mental fortitude, right? So these guys are just doing obscene amounts of like calisthenics and just tearing their bodies down. And I think a lot of times once they get to their units, if they're not at a school, like if they're at dive school, it's going to be like more of the same. But if they're just training and trying to get better, it's a lot of more like, okay, let's actually go for strength now. And let's actually try to build athleticism because I mean, we, we were selected then because of our mental fortitude, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Um, So Sal's right. Sal's right here. Yeah. 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 So if I could kind of like take a step back though, um, you guys recommended like maybe two foundational, like, or I should say fundamental strength days. So would you then like, would you take a phasic approach to it and kind of like drop everything else? Like say, you know, your, your five mile runs for time, would you drop that, that down to like maintenance volume? And then on the fundamental strength thing, would you take them through like maybe, okay, on our two fundamental strength days, it's going to be like a mesocycle of like mass anabolic. And then after we get done with that, we're going to switch to like more of a phase two mass performance type thing. Yeah. Is yeah. Yeah. Would, yeah. I would still I like, phase it yeah. and I would do I like one. That. If you have the ability to do that. Yeah, yeah. And I would do one, you know, longer run uh, during the week. And then the rest of the, the conditioning is going to be sprint based. Uh, it's not going to be kind of like these long distance type runs. You're looking at speed, performance, agility, um, that kind of stuff. I mean, I don't know how often you guys in the field are having to run five or 10 miles. You still need that stamina, but oftentimes in my, from, again, from the people I worked with, it's like, you got to react fast. You got to be quick. Um, and you got to sprint. And sometimes the sprints are longer than a sprint, but it's typically not like this long six or seven mile, you know, type of pursuit. So I would incorporate that kind of stuff, agility work, um, and again, the, even once a week, I promise you, like I said, I, I, I worked specifically, there's one guy I can think of right now. He's now actually a, a high level jujitsu competitor, but he was a SWAT team and he was doing weight training three or four days a week. And he was having issues with his joints and he backed all the way down to one day a week, 45 minutes, his strength went through the roof and he just felt so much better. And he's like, I can't believe this basic and low of, of, of volume it's making me feel so good. I'm like, well, dude, you do so much other stuff. Yeah. That's about it. Well, you know? if you, yeah, if you can structure it in a way where you can actually take that 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 one phase where you have a couple of weeks where you're a little more focused on specifically on strength, you you bring down the endurance a bit, uh, but you know you come back to it. So it's obviously like the endurance part is going to be like more of the priority within this setting. Uh, but to be able to kind of focus in on that, your body's going to be able to respond better and get you know that that base level strength more. Efficiently, uh, but then you're going to have to cycle yeah. back, uh, you know, into your your heavy endurance. Now, Jake, you said you're a personal trainer. Um, Obviously, so you can I'm, hear the way he's talking. Yeah, I'm going to send. Do, do you have Maps Prime Pro? No, I have I have Prime, but I don't have Prime Pro. Yet. Okay, oh, yeah, so I'm going to send that to you because as a trainer, I think that's going to have the most value for you. Uh, you're going to be able to apply this with your training and other people's training. You're going to love that program. Great correctional exercise. So we'll send that over to you, and we appreciate you calling. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate you guys so much. Have a good one. No problem. Yeah, I, 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 I tell you, it's like there's so, the big mistake is like. No, you're right. I'm on a you're, peak. You're right. You're right. You're right. I mean, that was uh, again. I didn't. I don't have very much experience training these, so I don't know what their protocol looks like outside of what I would be you know, like. And I'm thinking I'm controlling all their activity. If I'm controlling all their activity, I know that I want to make sure I push that. But based off of what you said and what Jake confirmed, is that. You know they have so much of that outside of the training with me mm-hmm. that you're right. You, I don't need to push that. They're getting that already. Mm-hmm. So I'm probably leaning more towards the recuperative and skills training with a very minimal amount of strength training one to two days a yeah. week. Our next caller is Emily from Nebraska. Hey, Emily, how can we help you? Hi there, guys. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you for having me on. It means a lot, and I'm really excited to get to talk to you today. Cool. All right. Uh, uh, so my question is, or kind of a little bit of background, um, in high school and in college, um, I was a shot putter. Um, I loved it, loved the training. I was all about it. And then my sophomore year of college, um, I hurt my shoulder. And so um, I ended up not participating or competing my junior and senior year. Um, after that, I felt like life just kind of happened. And um, I kind of started to develop I mean, I would describe it as a bad relationship with my health. Um, I really started looking at the physical 
more than the internal and just what health truly was for me. Um, and so I started working with a coach two years ago now, and that's how I was actually introduced to you guys. Um, and so she started having me run anabolic and also a little bit of map strong. Um, but this past spring I had the opportunity to coach shop put again. And I just, I realized how much I missed it. I had so much fun with it. I really felt that sense of happiness and health when I was doing that kind of thing. Um, so right now I'm kind of wondering if I'm in that, um, I need something different phase. Um, so I was wondering, um, is it okay if I were to run one of your programs um, that would be more of a shot put thrower oriented program over like an anabolic, um, even if I don't regularly throw the shot put anymore. Um, and I don't really have a way of measuring my progress as far as throwing the shot put because um, there aren't a lot of competitions around here like that. Um, and if so, what kind of program would you recommend? Absolutely. That? Yeah, no, great Absolutely. question. No, the answer is no. You're not allowed to do anything. Like <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> yeah, yeah you can't do what you no, love. I listen, <laughs> listen, Emily, you 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 were you did it in for a long time. You competed in it. You, you said a couple things that made this answer very easy for me. You it brings you joy. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you find joy in your fitness, you're you, that's kind of part of the secret of longevity in terms of consistency with your workouts. Of course, if you don't overdo it and don't hurt yourself. So yes, please do what you love. Now, what program would benefit? Uh, you know what you're doing. I mean, Maps Performance yeah, would probably yeah, yeah. be performance for sure with that your best type of program. But you're going to probably have to individualize it a little bit because you're you have a specific training. But oh, listen, if you love something a specific style of working out so long as you don't overdo it or abuse your body. That's the one that you do because you're going to be doing it more consistently. You have joy while you do it. So definitely, definitely the answer is yes. I, I'll be even more specific. I think that uh, MAPS performance with a your all your shot put throwing type of mm -hmm. skills training. During uh, the mobility days. Mobility days. Yes. So mobility days, I would, so you'd, I, I'd follow to a T pretty much the foundational days for strength training. And then on my mobility days, I would go out to the field or wherever you train for shot put. And I would start off my routine with some mobility exercises from the program. And then I would go right into my, my shot putting. And I think that would be an incredible. And the only thing that I would watch for is because if you're doing all the mobility stuff and the shot putting and the foundation, maybe you feel a little soreness, especially at the beginning, carrying into your workouts because you haven't maybe done shot put stuff for a while. So then maybe scale back the intensity a little bit on yeah. the foundation days. Listen to your body if you're if you're kind of overreaching a little bit and scale back. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think that uh, that program will complement uh, your goals. You'll see incredible benefits from it. And I think it's already structured uh, for somebody like you. Yeah, find a lot of those like rotational mobility type of drills to to bring into those mobility days. You don't necessarily have to follow, you know, specifically like we, we put like sort of an outline there for you to kind of pick and choose uh, which ones were most appropriate. But there's going to be some of those types of drills and movements that uh, are, are really going to be beneficial in terms of, you know, rotation and uh, proprioceptive type of, uh, you, you know, movement. And uh, I think that that's going to apply best. Uh, for what your pursuits are. Yeah. Do you have MAPS Performance, by the way? I do not. Right. No, I don't. All right. We'll send that over to you, okay? And we make, appreciate well, you calling. And also, shout out, shout out your coach there, because uh, they're obviously a good coach who turned you on to us. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I have those weekly calls with her. She's like, well, listen to what the Mind Pump guys say. Did you listen to that podcast? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's great. Smart coach. Yeah. She's our people. Yep. Been awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I, I swear, unless it's hurting you unless it's abusing you unless you're getting developing health problems if there is a physical pursuit that brings you joy yeah that's do the answer it. yeah i don't care what it is again unless it's hurting you do that one because that's the one you're going to want to well, do i time. think we still get this because of uh and this goes back to what we just talked about the other day with the whole cardio thing i think because we we kind of shit on the cardio so much that there's people that enjoy doing things like that. And I think that's important to make clear here too, that when we've said this again, and I feel like I have to repeat it because we still get. Well, this. I blame the space because the, you know, people I assume agree. everybody's dogmatic about whatever we promote. And really we're just trying to sift through what's best for the individual. That's right. Like, you know, if she, if her question was, Hey, I'm thinking about using shot put to get in the best shape and lose body fat. Do you think that's a great strategy? I'd say no. No, I don't. I yeah. think there's many other strategies that would be better than shot putting for losing body fat. But if you say, 
I love to shot put and I enjoy that and I want to build that into okay, my we'll routine. structure around that. 100%. Just like I would say to somebody who says, I love to go for a run or I yeah. love to get in the pool and swim laps. Like, absolutely. Let's. Is it going to be the most effective way to burn fat or build muscle? No, but it doesn't matter because the Sal's point in the pursuit of overall health and longevity if you're doing something you love to do, then you you absolutely should build it. I think just people get that that confused with you know their their type of training they're doing that they they've become addicted to or they fell in love with you know i.e. CrossFit mm -hmm. uh, you know Orange Theory type of high yeah. intensity like beating the body up like oh I love it like do you really because if you really do love it you'll probably be or consistent they're trying with it. to be all about body fat loss on top of like a <clears throat> really specific goal like that at the same time they're right. trying to merge all these things yeah. together and there and there's one factor we're forgetting is consistency so you know could I construct a more a superior fat loss Loss and fitness routine. I could, so long as the consistency is identical, but here's what I know. It's not going to be identical. That's right. You're going to be far more consistent doing the thing that you love, which makes it the most effective way for you to work out. And I don't care what that is. Again, so long as it's not hurting you and you're not abusing yourself. If your favorite form of exercise, the one that brings you joy is dancing, guess what I'm going to tell you to do the most of? Dancing. We're going to dance. You know, I wanted her to give her coach a, a, a like a true shout out because I love, uh, this is, this is the scarcity mindset is, is, uh, overwhelming in the fitness space. Like you just a lot of egos and, and yeah. I love to hear coaches that are willing to do that. I mean, I, I think we do our, do our best to try and pride ourselves on things mm -hmm. that when there are things that are above our pay grade or somebody we know that's a friend that is a, has, is a greater expert in that, that we always drive to that. And it, and it annoys me when I hear of coaches that, you know, are so afraid to to recommend somebody else who's an expert in that field in fear of, oh, I might lose this client or that I won't get the, the return of the money from it. And I love to hear a coach that actually is doing that. So shout out to them. Our next caller is Eric from Texas. Hey, what's up, Eric? How can we help you? How's it going? So uh, my question for you guys is a little bit of a two-parter. And so the first part is kind of just like, when you're going after addressing imbalances between like left and right, uh, kind of trying to ensure that you're not creating new issues in the process. And then also as you're identifying those uh, imbalances and addressing them, kind of making sure that you're not overdoing it. And so, you know, I've probably got about seven years of weightlifting experience under my belt. Uh, probably about four of them actually knowing what I was doing before that. It was just a lot of bodybuilding. Let me go get a pump in the gym type exercises. And then I stumbled across uh, Mike Matthews's bigger, leaner, stronger uh, program. And so I started running that. I made great strength gains, but I wasn't really paying attention to like how I was lifting if I was doing everything correctly. Uh, and then Mike introduced me to you guys' podcast and I, I learned a ton about imbalance. And so one of the things that I kind of noticed was like when I'm squatting, I've got my left foot pointed at 12 o'clock and then my right foot's more at like two o'clock. And so, you know, one of those things that I was trying to address was that that lack of external rotation on the left side. And so, you know, I started working at that for probably about a year. And then uh, I started doing like split squats instead of just like regular barbell squats and I started getting a lot of pain on my left hip. And so, you know, like that kind of frustrated me because I'm trying to do the right thing by addressing the imbalance. And then all of a sudden now I've got hip pain. Uh, and then like another thing was I noticed I had forward shoulder. And so I started working on that retraction of the shoulder blade. And then down the line, I take progress pictures. And now I see like, oh, I think I have a wing scapula on the left side, but mm -hmm. my right shoulder still looks like it's rolled forward. And so, you know, like I'm really trying to make sure that I'm addressing the imbalances, but not creating new issues in the process. Yeah. And like, I don't know if I'm doing too much, uh, too much work trying to fix things. And maybe that's why I'm getting like the hip pain. There's, uh, there's, just, there's a lot yeah. to unpack here. Hold on. There's a, let's, yeah. Let, yeah, we, <laughs> yeah well, we, so I, first let's, let's, I want to get to the bottom of the. What hip, right? So you, you you explain the feet, right? So you have a more of an the external rotation on the right the, side. Yeah, the right side is externally rotated more than the left side, correct? Just putting torsion yes. going in one direction, right? And so the they're trying to so compensate. then your the the hip flexor that you're feeling that's that's has pain or that is that is more tight. Is it on your left or your right side? I would say it's my hip flexor that feels tight, but sort of like the pain is kind of where like the femur is, you know, like. Uh, in like that hip 
socket. Is it kind of like on the back by like on on like the posterior side? Right, right. Is it on the right side or left side? On the left side. Okay, it's on the op opposite yeah. side. That's externally rotating. Well, I have a quick comment here, Eric. Um, that I think generally will help you here. It, okay, so the here's why what's happening to you is happening. Okay, and this is common when people do correctional exercise. This is why we make such a heavy emphasis on technique, form, intention when doing correctional exercise. So you're, you're focusing on scapular retraction. You developed winging because you did it wrong. You were actually doing your technique and form was not, uh, was not correct. So what you were actually doing is you were trying to bring the shoulder blades back, but we were probably doing is practicing a little bit of winging on one mm -hmm. side, right? So correctional exercise there, I, Form and technique is so it's important. It's all the intention. It's all, it's so, so, so important. You have to watch the videos and your form has to be exactly like what you see in the video. No deviation whatsoever. Otherwise, you're going to train and create something else. How do we do that? Well, watch the technique and go easier. You might be going too hard. You might be going so hard with the intensity that your, your technique is moving in the wrong direction. So, you can do correct. I've seen people do this, by the way. They'll do correctional exercise. They're like, oh, I, I, I know that rows help with forward shoulder, so I'm going to do lots of rows. And they end up with worse forward shoulder. How, how did that happen? Well, let me see you do a row. Oh, that's why, because you're training the row in a way that's encouraging forward shoulder. So, you know, we could try to break down specifically what we're going to recommend. I think that's almost impossible without assessing you. But I think generally, yeah. whatever you were doing correctionally, your technique intention was wrong. Now, can you overdo it? Yeah, you can overdo anything. But if your technique and form is perfect, daily practice twice a day for about 10 minutes is probably going to be ideal for This you. may be a situation, too, where you need to pull a coach in to observe uh, what your body is actually doing. Because uh, I know a lot of times like clients will be emulating what they see in a video or what, what the coach is trying to get you to do, but don't really realize uh, you know, yeah. what, what's actually happening as you're going through these movements with your joints, but definitely the cues. So something that you know Adam was able to address in, in the Prime Pro uh, webinar was, was a lot of those very specific cues of how you need to feel your way through those very uh, intensive type of mobility drills. So that's the direction I was going to go. So Eric, have you followed that uh, Prime Pro webinar that I did? As a matter of fact, I actually bought Prime Pro about a month ago. And in between the time that I submitted my question and now I've been running Prime Pro and I would say like my hip, it feel, I don't have pain anymore. So I've reduced my load. I've actually <laughs> just answered your own question. A rep range. So like now, you know, there's not as much load. I'm working in a higher rep range. So it's lighter weight. And I can really just focus on putting my body in the right alignment before, I, you know, when I'm going through my workouts and like, yeah, like I said, my hip feels uh, incredibly better now. That a boy. Awesome. That's so. That was the so the first <laughs> thing I was going to say. Uh, and if you haven't, uh, the the Prime Pro webinar, I actually like take you through. So you, if there's some movements, maybe you weren't un you're unsure of, or you want to see what the guys are talking about when it, when they say the intent and how I do it, so important. So take advantage of that. It's absolutely free. So watch it if you get a chance. Uh, and then the other thing I want to be able to give you is access to our forum. Justin was alluding to a coach. I'll one up that instead of you paying for a coach or I'm going to give you free, oh, free access there to our go. forum. When you get into the forum, say hi to all of us and then uh, post a video of you squatting so we can actually see so we can get to the bottom of this instead of us uh, guessing and speculating and trying to figure out if you the, the, one of the number one things that people use our forum for is exactly that it's filled with other movement uh, specialists and coaches and PTs and we're in there and they, they people love to post videos of their form doing something and then the community if we'll get to you or us will get to you and be able to kind of give you some some tips on what might be going on Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Awesome. Yeah, no problem. Thanks yeah. for calling in. Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, technique and form is always important, but boy, when it comes to correctional exercise, like that is everything. And you would be surprised, not you guys, but the people watching, you would be surprised at how hard it is with zero resistance mm -hmm. when you have certain imbalances. Zero resistance. So what people tend to do is they see a movement with a band or they want to use resistance on correctional exercise, and that's what they do, when in fact, they can't even get the movement down perfect with no resistance whatsoever. So you have to get perfect. Otherwise, what you're training is not what you're trying to aim for. Well, here's a, a – and I, I, I actually really like to try and – 
you know, figure out what these people, I know you, you stopped us. So it didn't go for an hour of us trying to oh, yeah. <laughs> unpack everything he was doing, but I do enjoy trying to, to help somebody that's like detective work. It is right. Especially when I can't see it and I'm like trying to like get, get what he's saying and then try and visualize it and go like, Oh, this yeah, is probably what I would probably do with them. But I mean, it, it, right away, some real key things that I heard was that the one side he's, he's, is externally wrote. So when he squats, one of his feet mm-hmm. is opening up, right? One side is opening up way more than the other side. Which right away, right away will tell me that he's probably shifting to another side when he squats. Which is putting a lot of torsion and stress on the other side. That's right, which is where probably the tight hip flexor and pain is coming from because that side's getting overweight. Or it's it's carrying more of the load when he squats X amount of pounds because he's shifting over to that side. So uh, right away we could and and, a, and a, this starts at the feet, right? He starts by addressing his ankle uh, ankle mobility, his foot strength. Then he works his way up to his hips on the internal external rotation, the ability to abduct and adduct, and then we work all all the way up from there. But um, absolutely, the, how you do this, the intent when you do the correctional exercise is so it's everything important. Yeah. Otherwise, it becomes actually kind of worthless mm-hmm. because you're not you're or not, detrimental. That, exactly. Yeah. By the way, the place you can see the webinar that we're talking about is primeprowebinar.com. Our next caller is Andrew from Iowa. What's up, Andrew? How can we help you? Not much. Um, originally, I was going to call in and talk about, I like to, I, I've always liked to run. I've always liked to lift. I know, especially listening to your recent podcast, uh, when you're on the Mark Bell uh, podcast, I really know I need to like cut back on the running. Um, so I need to focus on the lifting. I think I've always been a little skittish about my running or about my lifting uh, is because I have, I have an ostomy, uh, kind of similar to a person i that you guys interviewed recently who had uh, had the hernia. So it's going to be something similar. I have Crohn's disease. I know uh, nutrition kind of plays a part in that. Mm-hmm. I'm just kind of would like to pick your guys' brain, see if you guys trained anybody who has an ostomy. I mean, I squat, I deadlift, um, I wear a lifting belt um, probably more often than not because of uh, that abdominal surgery. And just really wanted your guys' thoughts on that. Yeah, um, so I have, and uh, it really, you have to just monitor your intensity. And this, this, by the way, is true for any, you said you have Crohn's, so any autoimmune issue can get flared up if stress or you know, overtraining becomes present. Like, you push yourself too hard, you, pro- you can increase your risk of getting more flare-ups because, of course, that's inflammation, right? It's chronic inflammation, it'll contribute right. to right. what you have before, so... Really just monitor the intensity and treat exercise like practice. So don't go to the gym to work out, but rather go to the gym to practice exercises. This will serve you well long term. So that's the thing that I would really focus on. As far as diet is concerned, I'm sure you've probably been talked to till, you know, your 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 ears are, are bleeding about all the different ways you can work, you know, eat and how you should avoid certain foods or whatever. The, the most success I've had with clients who've had uh, kind of these, uh, you know, gastroinflammatory type disorders, whether it be Crohn's or even other types of issues like colitis, uh, carbohydrate specific diet, I'm sure you've heard about this, um, but I've had clients with good success. Here's the, the issue. You have to be extremely consistent. Uh, when you go off, sometimes what can really fool people is they'll go off and be like, oh, I'm okay. I think I can kind of squeeze in a little bit of, you know, more bread or I can have a little bit of candy and then boom, you get a flare up and then it takes months to get it to come back under control or you have to get on medication. So it's exercise, really focus on practice, keep the intensity moderate and then diet. You have a different motivation than a lot of people who are just trying to get leaner and whatnot. You got to be very consistent with staying away from the foods that tend to cause you problems, extremely consistent because even if you eat them, and you notice no immediate issues, uh, it's oftentimes setting you up for issues uh, in the near future. Andrew, are, are you currently strength training right now? And, and if you are, what does it look like? Um, yeah, right now I'm training, you know, trying to do full body uh, at least three, four times a week. Um, I, at one point, um, I was lifting and running, you know, six days a week. The running was just ki- killing me, absolutely draining me. I was always a big fan. If you guys ever remember the Bill Phillips Body for Life program, yep. Yep. that's how I got. That's how I got into working out, and I just always have leaned, leaned heavily on that. I know, you know, having three kids working, I can't do it all. I know, and plus, I, I, kind of realized that I'll never get those 
gains or um, aesthetics if I keep running as much as I did. Uh, so it's finally just kind of realizing, hey, calm, you know, calm that down, rest, recover, especially with uh, with my Crohn's, my ostomy, all of that. Um, and, but yeah, I have a home gym at home, um, pretty nice little setup um, from the pandemic, and uh, work out, you know, two or three times a week. Yeah. Now, are you uh, are are you pretty good about switching up, like phasing the workouts? I mean, are you have you ever followed any of our maps programs? Are you familiar on how we periodize the, the programs, or do you do any of that yourself, or do you kind of follow? Uh, no. Someone? Go ahead. No, um, I've been following you guys uh, for the past couple months. Um, still learning uh, uh, the different maps programs, what that's all about. And uh, just really getting into it. Yeah, I, I would love to see you follow like Maps Anabolic. I think Maps Anabolic uh, two days. It has an option of two or three days a week. Um, if you're if you're scaling back on the running and you're not doing that, I think three days a week is is perfectly fine and doable. If you still were going to integrate running in there, I'd probably scale you back to the, to two times a week. Yeah. Uh, and and follow that routine. And I would even start in the pre phase uh, first and then move into the phase one after that. Even though I know you have some background. Uh, that type of programming, I think, would be ideal yeah. for where you're at. Yeah, I, I would go, look, to be more specific, two days a week of full body strength training and then two or three 10 to 15-minute walks every single day. That's it. So two, two or three walks after you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That actually helps with digestion. It helps reduce inflammation. Perfect for you. And it gives you that extra activity, which is healthy. Two days a week of full body resistance training. And then if you want to do any more, uh, mobility work. That's what I would do. You could do mobility work every single day where you, you, you go into your facility, your gym, you get a stick, you could do stick type mobility exercises. You could do prime pro type mobility and correctional exercise stuff. You could do that every single day. And then of course, like I said, the diet, the sleep, all that stuff. If you do that consistently, I think you will see your body progress mm -hmm. on a pretty consistent basis. The consistency is the key and frequency and, and to, to kind of overcome, you know, maybe some of the hesitancy towards uh, lifting weights. It's you don't have to go in there and, and, you know, try, try to, you know, add load every single time and, and really increase intensity, really just like practice, you know, these movements and keep consistent with them frequent. You're going to get the gains as a result of just doing it uh, more often. Perfect. And I know with me, yeah, it's, um, it's that, it's that diet component. Um, I have to, the way my body's structured, I have to stay on a almost paleo diet it works well for me. And as soon as I introduce more carbs in there, I swell up like a balloon. Yeah. Yeah. Are you familiar with the carbohydrate specific diet? I am not. Oh yeah. Look that up. Look that up. They've had Look a up. lot of success with people with Crohn's. So, and it's kind of similar to what you're probably already doing. Uh, so I'd look that up and you're and, and just see how you feel, but I, that's the biggest thing, man. I, that's look, what it's called, carbohydrate-specific diet? Yeah, and I, it, I've had, look, I have a, a godson who's got really bad Crohn's. Um, I have my own gut issues. At one point, I thought my, maybe I had that. Luckily, I don't. I've worked with clients who've had colitis and Crohn's, and uh, boy, I'll tell you, man, the consistency is everything with this. Like, And I know how hard it is because it's like you're doing well. Wow, my body feels good. I don't have any signs of Crohn's inflammation's down, everything looks good. Then you have like one cookie or one thing that's off the thing. And then you're like, I feel good. No, it didn't affect me. Let me try a little bit again. It did affect you and it's this cumulative effect. And then what happens, I'm sure you've experienced this as you push it, push it, push it. Boom, you get a, a flare up and then it takes you a while to I go mean, back. I mean, this is true for all autoimmune. I mean, this what you're saying right now, I know we're, we're talking about Crohn's, but I mean, I experienced this with my psoriasis, exactly that same thing. And I do it to myself all the time. Oh my God, I'm doing so good. I'll allow some ice cream in there. I don't, yeah. I can get away with one, two, oh, third time. Now I'm fucked. You know what yeah. I'm saying? My sister, endometriosis, same thing. She's, oh good, I've eliminated sugar. Everything's good. I'm fine. Oh, I had some candy the other day. I was totally fine. Have some more, a little bit yeah. more. And then it, boom, it comes. And so that's, I think that's the mistake a lot of people make that have autoimmune is you do a really good job of dieting. You're feeling really good. You go back to trying some of the things that were you, what you what were offenders before, and then you don't see anything. And so you think, oh, well, maybe it's not that, or maybe I can have that more yeah. often. And, and then it ends up flaring up. Yep. 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 No, but absolutely. I was, uh, thought I was feeling better. The medication was working, started changing my diet. And then, boom, next thing I know, I'm in the uh, hospital. They removed my colon. Yep. And I think I learned my lesson. Yeah, yeah. no, it's a, yeah, it's, that's, a, that's a tough situation. But, mm -hmm. yeah, do it now, and uh, you, you should be okay. And I'm assuming the medication they put you on was a very strong immune-suppressing drug? Very strong, yes. Yeah. And, Andrew, I'm going to have Doug uh, send over MAPS Anabolic for free to you. So he's going to shoot that over to you. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. No problem. Awesome. Yeah, the the drugs that they put uh, people like this on are they're like chemo drugs, chemotherapy, mm. and they oh, really? they attack, they are, and they all attack your immune system to suppress this reaction. But what you look at the side effects of these drugs increases your risk of cancer and other things down the future. They're really kind of a last resort. And I know I'm sure I'm talking to somebody right now who's listening who's like, man, you don't know how hard it is. Like I like I totally get it. But you don't have normally we communicate flexibility with people. When you're in a situation like this, you don't have any. You right. don't have the luxury of that kind of. Yeah. And as you can see, he had to have. No, this is the conversation. That, put this in. is the conversation that I have with my sister with endometriosis because how how awful that is for her. You have to she, become almost like spiritual neurotic. with it. Like yeah, neurotic. like it, like it's your religion. Like yeah. I can't eat that. I have to eat this yeah. particular way. Yeah. You know. Hey, look, if you like that, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free stuff. Mindpumpfree.com. We got guides on there for building muscle, burning body fat, getting a better squat. Uh, lots of cool stuff. Also, you can find us all on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. I didn't know it was called a growth mindset at the time, but that's exactly what I adopted. This belief that you can become anyone you choose to become with tenacity and, and determination. And I decided that I was going to be a healthy person with healthy habits. That was literally the phrase that was my bedrock. And so when I would ask myself, when I had, you know, faced with decisions or choices, I would ask